what are my views on Rihanna getting into the Kabbalah? Um, to be honest with you folks, uh, I really don't get into the uh, whole celebrity gossip thing. Um, I know I did a couple of articles on different celebrities and, you know, their affiliations with certain secret societies, but um, that was just more on a uh, universal sense, I guess you can say, as far as informing people as to, you know, these secret societies do exist and, you know, uh, being in the music industry is not what it seems. But uh, I really don't get too caught up into the whole celebrity gossip thing, but uh, I am going to go ahead and do this video because uh, it was brought to my attention um, to research some information in regards to Rihanna um, seeking to get into the Kabbalah through Ashton Kutcher. Um, now, I was going to do an article on this at first, but I was sitting there down there typing or whatever, and I'm like, you know what, this is not, it's not me. Um, I'm not going to sit here and uh, do a whole article, two to three pages on Rihanna getting into the Kabbalah, though it does have some significance. And uh, I, do, I do look at it as a teaching piece that I can kind of uh, educate folks on a little bit of information based on the fact that uh, she's trying to get into the Kabbalah and, you know, what the Kabbalah is and what this means and all of this type of thing. So um, I'll go ahead and take the time to do that, you know, educate people on uh, what exactly it means to get into the Kabbalah. Now, those of you that follow my uh, work and my information, you know I put out an um, article, well actually my blog is called uh, The uh, Various Schools of the Occult. And in this I talk about how there is uh, more than one Illuminati and uh, I talk about how there are many secret societies uh, within the music industry. There's not just one, how people think it is. There, there's not just one secret society. There are many secret societies within the music industry. Um, some of your entertainers are affiliated with more of the new age thing, you know, with the Aleister Crowley type of thing, and then you have other entertainers that are into the Kabbalah. And um, what's going on with Rihanna is, is that um, she basically um, decided that she wants to get a part of the Kabbalah. Um, I heard that Jay-Z, you know, and Beyonce basically um, got upset with her for one thing because um, she was talking about getting back with Chris Brown. And uh, for those of you that don't know, the whole thing that happened with Rihanna and Chris Brown was a play and a ritual. That was a play and a ritual. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't physically happen. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that, yeah, if Chris Brown did put his, hand, his hands on Rihanna. Um, from what I've seen on the pictures, he did mess her up pretty bad. But what you folks got to understand is that um, it doesn't stop um, for these entertainers when they when they get off the camera or whatever. Like like when they're not in front of the camera and when they're not performing and when they're not making albums, they're still uh, at very much at work and they're very much still uh, acting and their lives are ritualized. Like once you get to a certain caliber of the music industry, your life becomes basically like a soap opera. I mean, your whole life is ritualized. Um, you have handlers telling you to do X, Y, Z, to do certain things and telling you not to do certain things. And your life is very much controlled um, once you decide that you're going to get into the music industry. I mean, this is just something that you, you have to sacrifice your life to become a public figure, uh, essentially. And it's just like if you were a politician or a minister or anything like that. I mean, when you're a minister, your life is ritualized to a certain degree because once you decide that you're going to get into the ministry, uh, everything that happens in your personal life becomes public. Once you decide that you're going to become a politician and run for office, everything that you do becomes public. Public, uh, It's on public display and it becomes a public affair. So it's no different um, with entertainers. Their lives are ritualized. And uh, the fact that Rihanna is deciding to get back with Chris Brown um, just basically really shows that it was a ritual from the beginning. And I was telling people this that those that were around me before, like when it first happened, when Chris Brown first put his hands on Rihanna, I mean, I knew the whole thing was a ritual. Um, Rihanna, first of all, what I'll say is that her name, Rihanna itself, even though that is her middle name, and she was born with that name, Rihanna um, is actually an ancient uh, Welsh deity named Rihanna. It's spelled just like Rihanna's name, except at the end, instead of an A, it's O-N. It's Rihanna. And uh, Rihanna was actually a, uh, a Welsh deity. And uh, the story of Rihanna carries over into the story of Ishtar. 
and the story of Ishtar carries over into the story of Nana. So um, all of these different deities and beings correlate, and you can research this, you know, to get more information on this to know that I'm not making this up or whatever. Um, Ishtar, Rihanna, and Nana are all the same deity. So um, they're all the same deity, and they're telling you a, a, a story in a soap opera predicated upon uh, some ancient events that took place. Actually, uh, the, the original Ishtar was actually an extraterrestrial, um, and... Ishtar uh, made a descent into the underworld to uh, find her husband, Tammuz. She decided to go into the underworld to find her husband, Tammuz, and to reclaim him. But in her doing that, she had to um, give she had to give a piece of clothing for each level of the underworld she went to. And it's seven levels to the underworld. So when she got to the sixth level and when she was entering into the sixth, seventh level, she was naked because she had to re remove a piece of clothing for each level of the underworld that she went to. So by the time she got to the seventh level, she was totally naked. Now this core relates to Rihanna or Rihanna because Rihanna um, is on her, she made six albums and now she's, on, she's about to be coming out with her seventh album and she has to descend to the underworld. She's leaving Jay-Z. Um, and Beyonce and you know that whole clique or whatever because that's a clique and she was basically told that she couldn't see Blue Ivy and things of this nature from, from me researching it this is all a ritual that's being played out folks Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce represent the gods see when, it, when Ishtar descended into the underworld the gods basically banished her she lost her position and status and she went to the underworld to seek out her husband um, which was Tammuz at the time so basically uh, what Rihanna is doing is, is that in reality she's basically rebelling against the clique that she was in or whatever. So she's descending into the underworld, she's hooking back over Chris Brown, and then she's messing around with um, Ashton Kutcher. And uh, you know she's kind of looked at like um, a, uh, a whore or whatever based on the fact that Ishtar was actually a sex deity. And she was looked at as a whore. So when we deal with the music industry, I mean, they don't deal on religious levels and, you know, um, they're not binded by um, the whole religious aspect of life. So they're a little bit more um, free with their, you know what I'm saying, with their selves and their sexuality and things of that nature. So she's acting out the role of basically a whore or whatever, or even off camera or whatnot, based on the fact that Ishtar was a sex or fertility deity herself. So she's acting out Ishtar. Um, another name for Ishtar was, was Nana. And uh, Rihanna made a song called Oh Na Na, whereas in the song she said, Oh Na Na, what's my name? When she said, Oh Na Na, what's my name? She's telling you that her name is Na Na, and she's acting out the deity uh, Ishtar. And the story of Rihanna, which was a Welsh deity, correlates with the story of Ishtar, because the story of Rihanna, the Welsh deity that I was telling you about earlier, Rihanna um, actually did the same thing. I mean, she had a baby with her husband, because Rihanna and Chris Brown are what I think is they're going to end up having a baby. Eventually, I mean, this is how the soap opera is going to play out. So uh, you can probably mark my words on this. I mean, I don't know when it's going to happen, but they're probably going to end up having a child together eventually. But Rihanna had a child with her husband, and uh, she was banished because when she had the child, she was banished by the gods too. Rihanna was. Rihanna was banished by the gods because she she neglected her child, as they say. She was banished by the gods. Um, she was banished from her position because she neglected her child and something happened to her child and the gods blamed it on her. She left her child in, in, um, the, uh, in charge or she left her child with six, I believe it was um, seven, no, seven uh, maidens. She left her, char her child in charge with seven maidens. Again, the number seven comes up. The seven maidens in this uh, story represents the fact that Rihanna's on her seventh album. She, see, she's on her seventh album, so she has to go and have a child with Chris Brown. She has to go back and uh, get with him. This is a soap opera. You see, see, they make money on both ends. They make money off of the uh, so off of the artists and the albums, and then they turn around and they make more money off of the uh, artist and his personal life or her personal life. So they're making money on both ends. When the ritual took place, when Chris Brown put his hands on Rihanna, he was banished to the underworld because just like Tammuz, see, Chris Brown is playing out the role of Tammuz. Tammuz was banished to the underworld. Ishtar was married to Tammuz. So basically what happened was he was banished to the underworld and Ishtar ran and came and got him. She left her position and was banished by the gods and she descended into the underworld and she went and got Tammuz. So this is a ritual that's playing out. Um, it started actually back in, I believe, in 2009. And it's tied into the Whitney Houston thing as well because uh, Rihanna made mention that her one of her favorite celebrities was Whitney Houston. And when she got the record deal with Jay-Z, she auditioned 
and uh, sung one of Whitney Houston's songs to get her record deal. See, many people don't know this. And what Rihanna is doing on an even deeper level, she has to do these rituals because she's competing for the number three spot in the industry. And she has to get into the Kabbalah to get the number three spot. She has to join the Kabbalah and get into the Kabbalah to get into the number three spot in the industry. Because um, Whitney Houston was actually held in number three position. Whitney Houston held the number three position. And now that Whitney Houston has transformed over into the other side, um, it's three people, three people competing for this number three spot in the industry. Brandy, um, Rihanna, and uh, Jennifer Hudson. See, all three of them are competing for this number three spot. Uh, in the music industry, so that's going on. That's what's going on right now, as far as with Rihanna or whatever. So Rihanna has to get into the Kabbalah because she has to go into the next level. She's trying to get to the upper echelons of society or whatever. So, um, and the Kabbalah is really the highest secret society that you could be a part of. Um, and Ashton Kutcher had to get into it through his wife, Demi Moore, believe it or not. So um, he had to get into it through his ex-wife, Demi Moore. And he was dating Rihanna on the low because he didn't want Rihanna, I mean, he didn't want his ex-wife to know or whatever that he was dating Rihanna or whatnot. And, you know, he didn't want to lose his status in that, in that part of society that he's in. See, they're in a different, but they're in, it's different secret societies going on, folks, like in this music industry thing. So it's deep. And they, and they study the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah is a form of Jewish mysticism. It's very deep. And um, it's like a tree of life or whatnot. And it's a form of Jewish mysticism. And um, it's a lot to it. But more or less, it's like a tree and it's like ladders or whatever that you go up or you go down and you descend up and you descend down. When you get into the Kabbalah or whatever, I mean, that's basically a sign that you're tied into, as far as the school of the Kabbalah, that these industry people are dealing with, when they uh, get into this thing, that means that they've been accepted by the upper echelons of society. Because the Kabbalah represents the upper echelons of society. I mean, you really can't get any higher. So Rihanna is competing for that number one spot. Um... She's right behind Mariah Carey, and um, believe it or not, um, your girl Madonna's tied into this. Your girl Madonna's tied into this. And just like when I wrote the article on Whitney Houston, you, you, you seen that Madonna was linked to Whitney Houston because Whitney Houston was the number three person. You see, so she was, she was sacrificed. Whitney Houston was sacrificed, as I talked about in my article, which you can get on 13signsastrology.com. And um, she was sacrificed. And uh, now what's going on is you have three women competing for that number one spot, as I said before. Like I said, you got um, Rihanna, Brandy, and Jennifer Hudson. Now, Jennifer Hudson, she sung the... Um, she sung Whitney Houston songs. She channeled in Whitney Houston at the Grammys or whatnot. So that was the ritual that she had to act out. And she had to do some other things, too, to uh, get into the spot she's in. But Rihanna, they're having her do these rituals with Chris Brown or whatnot. See, the, see each, industry, each artist has to do uh, a different ritual to get where they're at. It's like a soap opera. So just like Jennifer Hudson lost some family members or whatnot, that's the price she had to pay. Rihanna um, was physically abused. She had to sacrifice her physical body. She was beat up by Chris Brown, and then now she has to turn around and get with him and kind of basically make it look like, you know, to her fans that she's doing something wrong. And then you had Jay-Z. Well, he's a god in the industry. So he represents God. He's the, that's why he calls himself Hova the God. He's like Jehovah or the God of the industry, him and Beyonce. Beyonce is a diva or a goddess in the industry. So the gods didn't approve of Ishtar when she descended to the underworld. She was banished by the gods out of the circle of the gods. And she's acting out that same ritual through the fact that she's getting back with Chris Brown and she's going into the underworld to get him. But she's probably going to eventually marry him. So that's what's going on, and that's why she's studying the Kabbalah and things of this nature, because she's trying to get into the upper echelons of society. Now, the Kabbalah is deeper than that, but I'm saying as far as on this level, this is on the mundane level. See, she's trying to get somewhere financially. She's trying to get to that fifty hundred million dollar mark or whatever, even higher than that, that $200 million mark or whatever. So it's certain rituals, sacrifices that she got to make to get there. And like I said, each artist has to do something different depending on the artist, depending on the uh, deity that they're channeling. See, she's channeling Ishtar, Rihanna, and the uh, deity Nana, and that's why she made that song or whatever. So, yeah, it's deep. It's deep. Um, what goes on in the industry, it doesn't stop when the cameras uh, go off. It continues to go on because you got the paparazzi flashing pictures and things of that nature. So they keep track of the artists when they're um, off of the cameras or whatever, when they're off of the television, when they're off of the radio. They're still being ritualized. They're still, they're still, uh, it's, it's money still being made. And uh, it's a game. It's a business, folks, like I said before. And uh, if you want to get into business, you got to play the game. And that's how it goes. So uh, I hope this helps or whatever, you know, to my few uh, listening audience and inquirers out there who wanted me to do this video on Rihanna. There you have it. This is why she's studying the Kabbalah. 
this is what her real agenda is. She has to get into that upper echelon, that number three spot. And uh, I'm going to say this. I'm willing to really uh, bet that I think that Rihanna's going to be the one, to be honest with you, that's going to make it into that number three spot as far as it's going to take the place of Whitney Houston. Now, I'm not saying she could take the physical place of Whitney Houston um, as far as her voice, but what I'm talking about is, is that, that level. See, the industry has levels. She's trying to take that position. Whitney Houston held a position in the industry. She wants that position, and I believe she's going to be the one to get it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be interesting to sit back and watch this thing and see how it goes. Uh, but that's my views on Rihanna um, and her joining the Kabbalah. So until we meet again, I'll say peace and love.